Hey there, this is Jerry Casale from Devo, and you're watching me on Mosh Camp. Oh, well, the best show Devo ever played was at Radio City Music Hall in 1981. Uh, they had a stage that was hydraulic that rose up from the basement, kind of like an aircraft carrier. And uh, our whole set was on it, so the audience was looking at a bare stage, nothing. And they heard this intro music and saw nothing in the pitch dark. And then suddenly we emerged from underneath and came up into view with a full-on set on the treadmills with all the lights going. And uh, they went nuts and never sat down. craziest show we ever played it was a show that Richard, Richard Branson talked us into playing uh, at Nebworth Festival where we were the uh, fly in the ointment, the, you know, the red-haired stepchild. There were bands like Genesis and Journey and some big American southern band, I can't even remember the name of it, um, Midnight Dixie Runners and bands like that. And Devo came out in our, quote, boiler suits with skateboard gear on. Started off with Smart Patrol and the crowd at this outdoor festival started screaming and booing and throwing bottles and cans. And, but they couldn't reach the stage with them because the stage was so high that they were hitting other people with their bottles. And the big fights broke out uh, below us in the crowd. Gee, I don't know. I mean, uh, Devo never really qualified any of us as party animals, but I suppose Bob Mothersbaugh and I indulged in more uh, after-show activities uh, involving uh, cocaine and wine and girls. It had to be in, in um, Italy, where... Um, we were halfway through the show and there was a storm and it blew out all the power and the, uh, the audience started rioting because we couldn't go back on. They started attacking the stage. We had to run uh, backstage and lock ourselves in the dressing room for a while and the promoter brought some big vehicle around and snuck us out a side entrance and drove us out into the country to this resort. And it was about two in the morning and he had to knock on a door like a speakeasy and talk to somebody through the door. They let us in, and inside was this big party going on in a restaurant, and one wall of the restaurant was a glass wall that shared a view of the pool. So you were looking into the swimming pool, and there were all these rich, naked Italians swimming in the swimming pool, and everybody was doing cocaine. I think between Bob Mothersbaugh and myself, we have, uh, we could, we, we, yeah. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Good to see you, a surprise. One of the greatest drummers in the world, right there. Thank you. Right there, right on camera. Clem? Good. Good, I'm all right. All right. That's always good advice. He's a liar. Everything he says. <laughs> so yeah, Bob Mothersbaugh played shows with a broken uh, foot. I played shows with a herniated L5 disc in a back brace. I had to be strapped into a, a device that my uh, friend who makes science fiction props made so I could actually stand up straight and play and it wheeled around the stage. So I think we pretty much are in a tie. Oh, I think Devo, while we don't have a corner on the market, Devo has more than their share of crazy fans, as you can imagine, and bizarre experiences to go along with it, including a fan talking us into getting into his car in Italy, and he didn't know where he was going, and he got us lost in the countryside outside of Bergamo for hours. We couldn't find our way back to the A1 freeway. It was hideous. And then in Atlanta, 
fans talked us into going to a party where we were trapped by drunken frat goons who hated the band. And we couldn't get a ride back into the city because it was too late. Jerry is telling a pack of lies. He's telling a pack of lies. They all know me. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Look at this. All the big stars coming to pay homage. Look at this, Chris Stein, folks, the one and only. Good to see you. Well, from Australia. Yeah, oh, really. Hey, look. Now she's. Oh my God, Debbie. How you it doing? It is a pack of lies. Yeah, it always lies. I don't know if it's any good, but I hope it is. Well, it's it's almost old enough to drink. Oh, right. right. I'm taking it back. <laughs> what? Almost. He says wine Almost snob. This guy's a fucking wine snob. See? He's a wine snob. Well, That's what on top of a liar. Well, <laughs> well, now I'm going to give it to him. All right. Well, actually, the nicest thing I ever saw were um, um, at the uh, at a festival in Barcelona. These two beautiful girls close up to the front uh, we're, we're clearly on maybe ecstasy, maybe more, I don't know. And they were dancing the whole time and then it got more and more explicit until they stripped each other and they were making out and sucking each other's tits and dancing at the same time. And I got to watch it at song after song while I played bass. I can tell you the set went by really fast. Uh, well, I guess it wasn't too weird, but on the beach in Perth, on, and I, I didn't remember that we had gone out there, and I don't remember the night very well. It was a beautiful surprise. Oh yes, we, uh, through no fault of our own, um, police shut down a show in Houston because the promoter had overbooked it, so they sent in the fire department because it was a safety hazard. And we didn't understand that we had to stop right away. By the time we understood that, they pulled me off the stage and took me and the tour manager and the drum tech straight to jail. And we spent the whole night in jail and were arraigned the next day and we're about an hour away from going to county jail, being locked up with psychos, when our lawyers on the West Coast woke up and, and uh, bailed us out. Well, certainly uh, that was a big run-in with the cops that night in Houston because I tried to convince the crowd that we had to quit, and I said, there's little piggies backstage, and they're gonna take Devo to jail if we don't stop playing, and of course the crowd doesn't see them, and they're, I mean, fuck you, fuck you. So when they drug us off to jail, they singled me out as the guy who had said little piggies. So they threw me in with all the guys that had been in knife fights and stuff in a holding cell, and then woke them up and said, you got a rock star in here, and pissed them off really well. It's right out of a bad Elvis movie. <laughs>